our top story this evening, the government today justified its decision to send CBI's top two officers on leave, saying it was done to ensure fairness and institutional integrity. The government also said that an SIT will be formed to investigate all charges. The current joint director, uh, Nageshwar Rao, has been appointed as the agency's interim director. After Alok Verma was asked to go on leave, the special director, Rakesh Asthana, has also been sent on leave. Now, 13 CBI officials also also have been transferred just 13. Uh, these 13 officials were supervising the probe against the CBI Special Director Rakesh Asthana, who was relieved of his duties on Tuesday. The CBI Director Alok Verma has now moved the Indian Apex Court, uh, challenging his compulsory leave. The court will hear Verma's petition on Friday. Remember, the government uh, of India's order that sent Verma on leave followed a recommendation by India's Chief Vigilance Commissioner, India's Central Vigilance Commission is responsible for checking corruption among employees of the Indian government. The body believes that in order to conduct a fair probe, the officers in question must step aside. CBI's Director Alok Verma and Special Director Rakesh Asthana have been involved in a bitter feud for months. The top officials have accused each other of corruption. CBI has accused Asthana of extortion and forgery. The agency had earlier filed an FIR against the special director. In its FIR, the CBI had accused Asthana of receiving bribes from businessman Satish Sana in return of, uh, for a clean chit to him in the Moen Qureshi case. And Rakesh Asthana had earlier written a letter to, uh, the, in, to India's cabinet secretary. He had also alleged that the CBI director Alok Verma was engaged in corrupt practices instead. Asthana had claimed that Alok Verma had received kickbacks of uh, 2 crore rupees to settle the case of Satish Sana. The Central Bureau of Investigation has come out in defense of its chief Alok Verma. But let's listen in to what Arun Jaitley, the union minister, had to say today. The Central Bureau of Investigation is the premier investigative agency and the maintenance of its institutional integrity is a precondition. It's absolutely essential. CBI ka aarop special director ke upar hai. To CBI ke do bade adhikari, sabse bade adhikari jo hai, उन दोनों पे आरोप है अब इसकी जांच कौन करेगा द रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ फेयरनेस एंड फेयर प्ले हैव टू बी देयर now, amid the raging internal war within India's premier investigating agency, the government has now put forth reasons for divesting the CBI director. Now, the Central Vigilance Committee received a complaint about a series of grave allegations against senior functionaries of the CBI. The Central Vigilance Commission claimed that the CBI failed to furnish the records and files before the commission and that the CBI under Alok Verma was not cooperating in making the files available. The commission added that Alok Verma the director of CBI created willful obstruction in the functioning of the commission. The CVC also said that this is just an interim measure to remove uh, both Alok Verma and Rakesh Asthana for now. And while joining us uh, for the latest on this is Shantanu Sen, former joint director in the CBI. Shantanu Sen, thanks very much uh, for talking to us. Your views uh, this evening on what the government has done in this particular case. Uh, are you satisfied with the, uh, with the, government's announcing, the government announcing an SIT? And does the CVC actually have the mandate to probe the, C uh, the CBI? In fact, the government has done just what I had said it should do. I made this recommendation to my in my first channel uh, appearance in Times Now. When two senior officers are making allegation of corruption against, against each other, and both are senior officers, it is essential that it should be inquired into. Now, they are senior officers of the CBI, so CBI itself can't inquire into it. And as it is the practice, when you are under inquiry, you are moved away from your position of authority. 
We have done that in Mr. Akbar's case. We have done that in Mr. Pachori's case. Senior people, very senior people, ministers, Nobel Prize winners have right. been removed from their posts so that inquiries can be made against them. Hmm. So it was a perfectly correct decision to remove them. And I also said that the CVC, which is statutorily, first of all, it was the Department of Personnel, but now the CVC is the statutory superior authority for controlling okay. CBI. Okay, fair enough. It has every right to control CBI. Right. It is actually... So, CBC is the right to investigate. Okay. CBI has a, CBC also has a police officer as a member. So, I, get your point. I also said SIT should be created, special office. Yes. The government has done exactly what I had said, and that was said three days ago. So, I am entirely satisfied. Right. You are entirely satisfied. But what about the allegations that uh, the CBI director, Alok Verma, has now made in his petition to the Supreme Court, where he is saying essentially uh, that, you know, some of the investigations that were taking place under him were not satisfactory to the government, which is why this has happened. Why do you think that he's made these statements? No, he, he, he has gone to the Supreme Court. Rakhir Astana went to the High Court. Everybody has a right to seek the protection of the court. The government has exercised its executive authority. The CBC has ex exercised its powers. Now, of course, the High Court and the Supreme Court are our statutory agencies to look into the ex exercise and, and say that these exercises proper and justiciable. So both are seeking High Court relief. Not all can go to the High Court, Supreme Court. They don't have the money and the lawyers. No, but These yeah. are senior officers. There must be many people working for them. So right. they have gone to the High Court to seek whether the orders are justiciable. Right. But Shantanu Sen, the point here being <coughs> that... But it, the order in, in... The point here being that it was Rakesh Asthana who had initially filed, uh, you know, uh, a complaint against Alok Verma in the CVC on August 24th. And, you know, the CVC thinks that Alok Verma is not cooperating and therefore, he, you know, he needs to go and leave as well until the probe is over. Uh, and Alok Verma is making the point that the CVC is acting against him because of Rakesh Asthana's complaint. Doing something first doesn't make it right. So exactly. Don't go by the argument who went first and who went second. The point is, are these, are these allegations really worthwhile? Who will judge that? They can't judge for themselves. CBC can't judge. So there has to be an SIT. If there are allegations against anybody, there should be an inquiry. And the allegations have not been made by ordinary uh, subordinates in the CBI. It has been made by two very senior DGP ranked officers. One is junior DGP, one is one is senior most DGP. So they have to be heard and respected. Okay. Otherwise, the CBI okay. will earn a bad name. Yes, the CBI has already so earned a bad right name. Shantanu Sen. If they have done the... But my point being, as a former CBI director, where do you see the situation yes, being headed? Do you think, don't you think that this is an unprecedented situation that the CBI is seeing? And how did it really come to this? We know that there has been a feud between the top two officers of the CBI for months. Uh, couldn't there have been an intervention earlier? No, it is an unprecedented situation and there should have been an intervention much earlier. <coughs> this should have been taken, uh, the CBI should, be, should have been taken by the scruff of its neck and the CBC should have intervened. CBC has failed to intervene and if the CBC does not report to the government, the government is helpless. We ask the government to keep your hands off the CBI and the government has kept its hands off the CBI. The CBC had to act and probably CBI seeing an unprecedented situation just got too timid. Okay. CBI did not act. CBC did not act. <coughs> but let me assure you that CBC, CBI has gone through bad times earlier also. You know CBI has been right. named a catch parrot. You know CBI has been called right. the Congress Bureau of Investigation. You know CBI has been called the Corrupt Bureau. Right. So that means CBI has suffered these 
ignominies yes. before also. Yes. And thereafter, CBI has emerged as a very good organization. So yes. it is a setback, probably one of the biggest setbacks of time. But if the right. notifications issued by Santanam Committee, yes. by Lal Bahadur Shastri's time, by DP Kohli's time, had they been had they been followed. Yeah. The state of affairs would not have arrived. Well, Shantanu said that. From 2000 Absolutely. onwards, the governments which have been in power yeah. have, have yeah. made poor selections. Yeah. They have not followed these notifications. Result is this, this, this state of affairs. Okay. Now, as the mystery over the death of Saudi journal Jamal Khashoggi continues to unravel, the U.S. President Donald Trump has called the Saudi cover up, uh, uh, cover up of the murder a total fiasco. Trump speaking shortly after the speech of the Turkish President Erdogan, who has urged Riyadh to search and identify those responsible for Khashoggi's death in Saudi consulate uh, in uh, Istanbul on October 2nd, uh, had had to say this. Now, the incident has caused a massive global outrage and strained relations between Riyadh and Washington. Trump's stand on the issue has ranged from threatening Saudi Arabia with very severe consequences to more conciliatory remarks highlighting the country's role as an American ally against Iran and Islamist terrorists and also as a major purchaser of U.S. arms. I'm saying they should have never thought about it. Once they thought about it, everything else went wrong also. Mm -hmm. Very simple. They should have never thought about it. It should have never been done. But once they thought about it, everything else they did was bad, too. The cover-up was horrible. The execution was horrible. But they should have never been at an execution or a cover-up, because it should have never happened. And Anur Irem, political analyst, is joining us from Istanbul for the very latest on the investigation and, of course, the political statements on Jamal Khashoggi's death. And Anur, uh, thanks very much for joining us this e evening. And uh, do you feel, uh, well, do you feel that uh, Trump is growing more and more frustrated with uh, the Saudi Arabian statements that are putting him in the spotlight as well? How do you read the statements uh, by President Trump like, you know, the worst, this is the worst cover-up and visas are going to be revoked and so on? Of course. Uh, good evening. Um, yes, uh, we do see that uh, President Trump is definitely feeling more and more pressured on this issue. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> let's remember, in the beginning, he said uh, he was saying he was making out statements as such where if this had happened, <coughs> it wouldn't, you know, break the arms if they have, that they have multi-billion dollars and, and what have you. But now, in the last uh, week or so, and it, it seems to be increasing upon him, uh, that he's making less and less of those statements, and he's putting, uh, on, on his side, he's putting more and more pressure on the Saudi side to, to reveal the truth. Um, I, I guess employing CIA, <coughs> which I still have, hard time to understand why they would get involved, hmm. especially after so many days, uh, is actually, I think, is, is a very clear sign of the type of pressure that he's feeling upon himself. Uh, as I said earlier, actually, as I said almost 10 days ago, that despite what Trump, Trump was saying back then, um, if this comes out the way everybody thinks that it comes out, uh, Trump's uh, willingness to sell arms to Saudi Arabia will not be up to him because he will yeah. feel such pressure from domestically and internationally that he won't be able to do what he said he would do. Yeah, but uh, Anur also rightly pointing out what President Trump, uh, you know, has said uh, and which could be strategically right for the United States is that if he is, you know, going to give up uh, uh, on Saudi Arabia as an ally, there are many chances that Russia and China are going to step in and take advantage of that. And that's a big loss to the United States. Having said that, where is the Turkish probe today into the investigation? We've been seeing uh, several, you know, varying reports on, uh, on what's happened in the last 24 hours or so. Um, I, I don't think anybody wants to lose the uh, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, neither uh, Turkey nor the United States, as an ally or as a cooperating government or, or, or a country, I should say, rather, in the region. Uh, even Turkey has really suffered a lot from this uh, mess that was created, that seems to be have been created by the uh, KSA, but Turkey is still not shutting the, the doors of diplomacy uh, with KSA. Uh, I, I believe... Uh, directly or indirectly, uh, President Erdogan has had uh, several talks with uh, the king of uh, KSA, so he's certainly not shutting down the door. So this doesn't mean to shut everything down with Saudi Arabia. 
uh, what Turkey has been pushing or what President Erdogan has been pushing from day one is for the truth to come out. A lot of people are tying this, uh, and very rightfully so, to the uh, to, to uh, MBS, to the Crown Prince. Hmm. It may be, it may not be. Uh, we are not really after, uh, I don't think President Erdogan or anybody else on this side uh, is really interested in removing the MBS from the uh, from okay. the sea. What everybody is interested in is for the truth to come out, and whomever is is, is responsible for these, uh, or whom, uh, how, how many right. people there are, that they 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 you know they meet their uh, they meet their consequences. They get their they they get punished for this. That that is all. Uh, at right. the end of the day, who would suffer from mostly from this? It looks like outside of KSA, it would be Trump administration itself because. They have taken. He has taken such a wrongful yeah. stand from yes. the, from day one. He's trying to correct it now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much time he'll have or how much opportunity he'll have, especially with the midterm elections coming up. Right. Yeah. Well, seeing the news about the U.S. President Donald Trump and well his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin, who are likely to meet in Paris next month, their first encounter since the summit in Helsinki. The possibility of a meeting on November 11th came after a meeting between the U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton and the Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin in Moscow this week. The Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty will possibly be the focus of the talks between the two leaders. Uh, on Sunday, the U.S. President's stunning announcement about withdrawing from the treaty had caused widespread global concern. Trump's announcement uh, to withdraw from the nuclear weapons treaty came after he accused Russia of violating the treaty. We may, as being discussed right now, Mike Bolton, as you know, is in Russia, uh, talking about various things, including the whole nuclear situation. Uh, where we were not treated well for many years. This should have been done a long time ago. And I think something good could come out of that. And I very well meet with, uh, I think we probably will. It hasn't been set up yet, but it probably will be. Meanwhile, China has called on the relevant parties to properly address the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty dispute. The Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman said it completely uh, is wrong to link the U.S. withdrawal from the treaty to China. The Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty is a treaty signed by the U.S. and the former Soviet Union. It's a bilateral treaty. It's totally unreasonable to make an issue out of China on withdrawing from the treaty. China always upholds a national national defense policy that's defensive in nature and firmly safeguards its legitimate security interest. We will by no means accept any kind of blackmail. We would like to urge the U.S. not to move against the trend and think twice before taking any action. And while Julia Chapman uh, is joining us from Moscow for the very latest on this. And uh, Julia, thanks for joining us this evening. Now, Paris seems to be a neutral venue, but no guarantees here that President Trump will adhere to any international laws or treaties. What does Moscow hope to achieve from this, uh, uh, this supposed meeting that's going to take place? Yes, I think after John Bolton's two-day visit to Moscow over the last couple of days, the Russians have no illusions about trying to convince uh, the Americans to stay in the treaty. John Bolton yesterday at his press conference that I attended was very clear that uh, the U.S. would be withdrawing and that a formal notification of withdrawal would be happening in the next couple of months, possibly as early as December. There's a six-month uh, withdrawal process from the INF treaty, which means that it could stop coming into effect uh, in the summer next year. So uh, that will will definitely be uh, on, on the agenda if, that's, if this meeting in Paris does go ahead. It is, in fact, as you said, a neutral setting. Uh, John Bolton was talking about it yesterday. It does seem like this meeting will be going ahead on the sidelines of uh, the memorial centenary event of the World War I uh, that has come to, came, came to an end 100 years ago. Right. And Julia, you know, when you talk about the relationships, uh, relationship between the U.S. and Russia, it hasn't seen this kind of an escalation, many would believe, since the Cold War. And withdrawing from this treaty would just worsen the situation uh, pretty much. That's certainly the perspective from the Russian side. Um, Russian officials and uh, experts here have been unilaterally condemning this move. They say that the INF Treaty is integral to uh, worldwide stability and that the withdrawal from it will lead to a new arms race. That's certainly the view of some people here in Moscow. So there are some concerns that it does make the world a more dangerous place, but the uh, Americans seem convinced that that's not the case. And of course, as you alluded to uh, earlier, there are concerns on the American side that of course this treaty only applied 
to the U.S. and Russia. John Bolton was certainly uh, speaking about that yesterday. He said in, in the end, uh, of course, the Americans accused the Russians of having violated this treaty over the last six years. So he said, given the other nuclear powers around the world, uh, namely China, as well as Iran, North Korea were among his concerns. And the fact that they accused the Russians of violating it, he said the U.S. is the only country being bound by this agreement. So why should the U.S. be held to it any longer? Um, there was some uh, scope for possible renegotiation. There was some hope that that might have taken place or might be still on the table. But I think after John Bolton's visit over the last two days, we've seen that that's very unlikely to happen.